Good morning, and welcome to St. Lawrence. Today we are celebrating the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant is Father Al, being assess assisted by Deacon Tex. For the safety of yourself and those around you, please refrain from singing. The Mass is being offered for the unborn, requested by the Knights of Columbus. For the sanctity of the Mass, please silence all safety devices. Now please stand. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Father Al Anishewski, and I'm the Minister Provincial of the Trinitarians, the order that staffs here at St. Lawrence. Um, I'm Father Victor's boss. <laughs> so it's my pleasure to be with all of you and to be able to celebrate this Eucharist with you. And I'll be coming over the next several months because we're waiting for our fathers to arrive from India. And uh, so until the consulates open up, uh, you're stuck with me and a few of the other priests from the provincial house. And once soon to be, Father Josh is ordained next weekend. He'll also be helping. So you have a lot of pinch hitters with you right now. So we're happy to be helping and serving as best as we can. Let us begin our celebration as we began our lives of faith and baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries of God's love in the Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask our God for his mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now with the church throughout the world and the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim God's glory as we say, Glory to God in the to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You are the Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, 
that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchman for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. The response is, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massah in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have one over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or tax collector. Amen, I say to you. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agreed on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. I feel like Madonna when I have this thing, one of her concerts. Once again, for those who came in late, just a quick introduction of myself to you. My name is Father Albert Onyszewski, Trinitarian Provincial, and I'm helping out here uh, so Father Victor doesn't lose his mind with having two parishes to take care of now. So you'll be seeing me for a while anyway, helping on the weekends. It's my pleasure to be with all of you. Have you ever noticed, my sisters and brothers, how the commandments that we hear most often are the ones that we have the hardest time fulfilling? Did you listen to those commandments that we heard in the second reading? Well, it's an example for us. All the commandments that we heard there by St. Paul, that he's reiterating of how we're supposed to live our lives, they're not easy. We all have to deal with people who try our patience or rub us the wrong way, don't we? You don't have that problem, do you? Everybody's very patient and very tolerant of one another. Now, of course, we have people who rub us the wrong way, people we have to be patient with, Spouses, you have to be patient with one another, right? Right? Are you asleep? It's after 10. Sure. You have to deal with one another. And parents with children, I'm sure your children never cause any problem, but you have the most patience with them, right? And maybe parents or grandparents with their grandchildren, teachers with their students, co-workers. Sometimes or another, we just happen to get on one another's nerves, right? We have to be patient. Well, there's always the pull of the world, my brothers and sisters, urging us towards being self-centered as we approach everything in life. The me syndrome. I think of me first and foremost. And all the time we hear in the back of our minds, Jesus telling us, love one another, even to prefer another to ourselves. And that's not easy, is it? Relationships, human relationships can be rough. As I said, we sometimes rub one another the wrong way. We're not so patient. Driving today on the Beltway, I thought people were crazy. People were, I, I was doing 65, I admit, if anybody's a state trooper, let me know. I'll see you after Mass. But I was doing 65, and people had to have been doing 90 on the Beltway. There's no patience. We lack patience. And that lack of patience, that sin, leads us to many other sins in our lives. 
So to love others and to love them more than ourselves, that's a hard call, isn't it? It's something very demanding from Jesus. It's not easy to do. But like Jesus, we should seek to serve instead of being served. Jesus asks us to take the lowest place at the banquet table. He even warns us that if we strive to be first, we're going to find ourselves last. But if we strive to be last, we'll be first, and we'll have the first place of honor. I think, my sisters and brothers, that our readings today are inviting us to do self-examination. How have we been doing lately in loving our neighbors as we love ourselves? Have we been kind? Have we been patient? Have we gone out of our way to help those around us? Think perhaps about hurtful things that we may have said about another person. I know we don't do that. We never judge people, do we? No. No, because we're perfect. We're far from it. We judge people, we think the worst things, and then we say the worst things. Think about the hurtful things again that we may have said or done. Think about the ways that we may have failed to, fend, to defend a friend or a family me member who was being judged unfairly as we participate in the gossip. Oh, that's something else we don't do, do we? We don't gossip. Or maybe we neglected to help a neighbor, a friend, or a family member in need. These are the, uh, the, um, the uncomfortable questions that we need to ask ourselves. God knows our hearts better than we do. Sometimes we try to fool ourselves and convince ourselves that we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't said anything wrong. But God knows the truth, and ultimately, we know the truth. We know the truth of what we think, what we say, what we do. God also knows how much we want to do good, even though we may fail at times. He, God also knows that he has placed his spirit in you and in me, and given us the divine strength that we need to become the best that we can be. God enables us to make those changes in our lives so that we can become better people, so that we can do better each and every day. But do we take advantage of that gift of God's Holy Spirit? Or do we just leave it tucked away waiting for another day. So let's not be afraid to open ourselves up to God, to God working in us, through us, and for us, and for others in our lives. Let's remember that what we're told in the scripture is God is love. And that love, God, is generous, and overflowing. You know, at the end of our gospel, we hear this great little thing that Jesus says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. I think St. Matthew cleans it up for us in the gospel, because I think Jesus really said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there's going to be trouble. Because have you ever worked with church groups? If you have, you know what I'm talking about, right, Deacon? So, because we are a mess as people, as human beings. But nonetheless, because God is love, he wants to help us. God wants us not so much to be successful, but to be faithful. So let us pray today, my brothers and sisters, that each of us, will open ourselves up to that gift of divine love in our hearts. That we will allow God's Holy Spirit to 
change us, to motivate us to always fulfilling God's commandments, what God asks of us each day to do for him and for the good of one another. May his love be with us today and throughout this new week ahead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Christ, God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present our prayers and needs to our God this day, confident that he hears us and provides us with what we need. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, William, our Archbishop, and our pastor, Father Victor, we pray to the Lord. For all deployed military, police officers, and emergency personnel, as they deal with stressful and dangerous situations, May God help them all to protect us with passion and patience. We pray to the Lord. For the love and protection of every human life, we pray to the Lord. And thanksgiving for all those who helped clean this church during the COVID virus, we pray to the Lord. For the combined pastorate of resurrection of our Lord and St. Lawrence Martyr, may these two parishes together shine the light of Christ even more brightly. We pray to the Lord. In anticipation of Deacon Joss's upcoming ordination to the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. For an end to racism in all its forms within our society and within our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the homeless and for all those dealing with devastation or disaster, especially in Louisiana and Beirut, we pray to the Lord. Lord for, for all the dead and for all those who die this day, Jesus lovingly escort them to all to paradise, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear the prayers we have voiced and those in our hearts. For we place them before you in the name of Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
gifts are prepared, pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints John de Matha and Felix of Valois, Lawrence the deacon martyr, Pope St. John Paul II, Faustina, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now with great confidence, we pray to our Father in heaven in the words that Jesus taught us and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You have some announcements. Thank you for your continued financial support of the parish during this time. Based on Governor Hogan's update, we expect to hear soon from the Archdiocese regarding any changes in present restrictions to parish operations. For now, nothing has changed for us in this county and the parish. Please take a flyer from the ushers on the way out and consider joining Deacon Steve on Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m or Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. for a virtual conference. Each week, we'll focus on finding God's presence in our lives, beginning with gratitude. It is free for you, as well as any friends and family. And finally, please see the parish website for details regarding the ordination of Deacon Josh to the priesthood and the celebration of his first Mass here at St. Lawrence. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, have a good and great week ahead. Thank you.